Camp NaNoWriMo starts in three weeks, and as of now, my outline looks like this. That's right, I haven't outlined a single scene for any of my three POV characters. And you may be thinking, John, three weeks is more than enough time to finish outlining, but this is not the only thing I have left to do before Camp NaNoWriMo, so really I need to be done this week. And thanks to the magic of video editing, my week is really only three and a half days. So now you can see why I am a little bit nervous. Still, I do have a plan. You see, in the last video, I created a premise for each character's story. So if I use each premise as the seed for brainstorming, then plug the ideas from my brainstorming into my outline, I just may be able to finish on time. Starting late in the day, I began this process by writing down what I already thought I knew. I tried to fill out the three-act structure for each of the characters and see what plot points felt firm, which felt fuzzy, and which were missing entirely. The only reason I decided to start here was because I want to get the wheels spinning a little bit. I want to start thinking about this, get the subconscious working on it, so that when I come back next time I have some fun ideas to work with. So I will continue tomorrow where we left off here. So I'm back for the first real day of doing this outlining, putting a full day's work into it, and hopefully my subconscious has been working on these ideas a little bit, and we will come up with some interesting stuff. Yesterday I left off in the middle of the idea development phase, so I need to take the ideas I already have and make them better. So I did a bunch of brainstorming so far for this first character. Figured out some of the main parts of his story already, but I'm trying to figure out what could potentially happen within those different sections of the story. So in the beginning of the story, he's going to be in the Eastern Coalition, and it's mostly going to be him responding to some big event that happens at the beginning of the story and getting a better idea for this character in this environment. The main thing that I focused on brainstorming is actually after the first plot point when he leaves to go to the West. I want this to be a decent amount of the story because I did promise some sort of adventure throughout all the marketing of the story so I want his story to contain some of this adventure. So I did figure out a bunch of the different things that could potentially go wrong on that journey as well as things that can highlight his big weakness which is his irresponsibility. So I've been working on the political intrigue aspect of Naj's story and I've taken it pretty far. I've figured out a lot of the details, like for instance, the power balances among the people of the West, who has power, what do each of these people want, what are their weaknesses, that sort of thing. However, I feel like I've already tapped out the potential of just thinking of random possibilities for the story and now I need to actually be a little bit more focused about how I do this. What I want to do is try something a little bit new with regard to the way I've been outlining using Save the Cat. For each of the beats in Save the Cat, I'm going to come up with many different potential potential ideas for what could happen. And this way, I'm avoiding that sort of pitfall where you pick the first idea that comes to mind, which is often the most overdone idea, the most cliche. And secondly, this will help me continue with this brainstorming, but in a little bit more of a focused manner. And my goal is that in doing this, I'll be able to come up with some really good ideas for what could work for each beat. So I just finished working through this idea brainstorming all the way up through the end of the setup. So this is actually working out really well. By coming up with multiple different ideas for each of these beats, I'm really coming up with some cool ideas and I really would like to get through it this entire brainstorming for every single beat for Naj today. That would put me in a good position to finish the rest of this outlining in three days. So here's hoping. <laughs> During my break, I noticed how late it was in the day and started to feel a little overwhelmed with how much work I had left to do if I was going to finish in three days. I decided not to stress about finishing Naj today, but rather just doing my best and seeing how far I could get. So I have worked my way up to the midpoint here. So things are going well. I have been doing a ton of brainstorming, trying to figure out different possibilities for scenes, different possibilities for things that this character needs to learn, challenges he could face, all sorts of things here. The fun and games is going to be an upward arc, and then bad guys close in is going to be downward, where he's realizing that this whole taking responsibility thing, leadership thing, is not as easy as he thought. So I just worked my way through the entire rest of the story all the way up till the closing image. 
if I finished outlining the entire story for this first character, Naj. You would think that's a good thing. I was able to do this in one day, and I have two days left to finish the remaining two characters, but both of their stories are more difficult than his, because his is the one I've been thinking about since the beginning, and I anticipate that hers is going to be the most difficult. Tomorrow, I'm going to be starting on Tuman's outline, but before I actually do that, I do want to take a few minutes to at least look over the outline for Naj again. And mostly I just want to check that this outline is working as well as I thought it was and potentially update a few little things here and there to make it better if I can. That is what I want to do first here and then we'll move on to Chiman. That kind of rhymes. Anyway. <laughs> So I finished reviewing Naj's story and just making sure that it is working well. I ended up working on the ending and a little bit of foreshadowing and trying to plant some seeds for what's going to happen later on. So I was able to make it better for sure. I don't think it's perfect quite yet, but I am going to be able to return to this outline again later on and update it even more. And I think that just giving it a, a little bit of time for my brain to spin on it and process it subconsciously will mean that when I come back to it later on, I'll have some better ideas for it. So for now, I'm going to set that one aside and move on to Chuman. So I'm going to get started here with some idea of brainstorming like I did with Naj in the beginning, just thinking of what ifs and trying to see where these paths take me and explore different ideas. So I just finished a bunch of brainstorming for Chiman, and now I'm ready to move on to the actual plotting. And one thing about Chuman's arc is that it's not going to be a positive growth arc in this story. She's going to start off here with a flat arc where she's holding on to the lie, basically. Her big thing is that she needs to learn forgiveness toward the people in the East. I don't want to go into it. It's going to be in the story, but long story short, some stuff happened in the past and it basically created a bunch of hate and resentment in her toward these people. And throughout this story, we're going to learn a little bit more about how she feels toward them, but we're not necessarily going to understand why yet. The story is going to be a flat arc because she's not going to be changing her beliefs. She's not really going to be growing. We're going to save that for the next book, but I am going to try and stick to the normal three act structure, the beats and save the cat as well as I can. I'm just not going to include the elements that would be necessary for a growth arc. So now that I figured out the brainstorming, let's just get started on trying to figure out some of these beats and come with a bunch of ideas for each, but I'm making sure that I'm getting the best ideas for each of these beats. So I ended up working from the opening image all the way to the end of the debate. So things are going well so far in this story. I actually really am liking Chuman as a character. I think she's a really interesting character because of the kind of grayness to her. She's really competent and proactive, but she's kind of held back by the fact that she doesn't really trust anybody. However, underneath that sort of cynicism and lack of trust, she does have this sort of caring nature. So I really like her as a character already coming into the beginning of this story. And I'm excited to write her through the rest of this book, but even more so in the second book when we're gonna get to develop her as a character and delve into her backstory. <laughs> I'm already excited for the second book and I'm not even done writing the first one. So I have worked from the midpoint all the way to the end of the story. So I have figured out Chuman's story and actually she's morphing into a little bit of a different type of character. She's kind of turned into an antagonist, at least if you look at it from Naj's perspective. I'm writing her as if she's the protagonist of her own story. However, her flaw, her distrust of people in general is kind of putting her in this position where she's acting in a more antagonist way. She's not necessarily crossing over the border into villain yet, but she's more toward that side of the spectrum than the pure like hero side. Now I still have a little bit more time today that I wanted to work on this anyway. So what I'm planning on doing here, since I'm already getting a little bit tired, my brain is getting a little bit more worn out, is I'm gonna work on something a little bit more light. And that is naming. I need to name some things, especially people. There's some people with some really um, questionable names right now. Like there's a girl, her name right now is GTLH. 
<laughs> What's an acronym? Her name is an acronym. And there's other people who have even longer names and they, they aren't even an acronym yet. They're just a long like sentence. <laughs> like for instance, there's a character called Second Elder in Town Over. I need to come up with some names because I don't want to have to write that out every time I encounter this character. So I'm going to go through for all of these characters as well as for some groups that I haven't named or some concepts that I still need to name, some new sorts of concepts. So I just named many, many, many people here in Plutter and I sorted them all by their book that they're going to be in as well as whether they're from the east, the west, or otherwise. I did also name a few little things like there's two groups that I ended up naming as well as I gave the, the leader of the east an actual title. I was already calling the leader of the west coalition mother so that already was a title that existed and now i have one for the east as well so i'm gonna call it here for the day and i'll be back tomorrow to continue working for the third character sashim i'm gonna start off as i did with the last two with some idea development and this is especially needed for sashim since i have thought about his the least So I did a bunch of brainstorming for Sashim. I feel like I have more than enough for his story now. So I'm going to move on to the actual outlining, coming up with the beats. Sashim's arc is definitely a positive growth arc. His main thing is acceptance learning to accept the reality of the balance between peace and war that in order to maintain peace you need people willing to act aggressively and be violent and defend and he doesn't like any sort of physical confrontation and also he has a lot of empathy so he feels for the subject of violence and if he were to kill a human, he would feel really bad about that. So those things have contributed to his attitude of nonviolence, despite the fact that other people are being aggressive toward him. So that's where we are at the beginning of the story, and I have cultivated tons of ideas to really force him out of this situation. So I have worked my way all the way to the break in it too, and now I'm ready to get started on the second act. So I'm making some good progress with Sashim's arc so far. I'm gonna start in the funny games. This funny games is going to be a downward arc until we get to the midpoint, and then things will start looking up for Sashim a little bit. So let's get started on this downward spiral. <laughs> Okay, so it took a while, but I worked my way through the fun games and I've arrived at the midpoint. And I already kind of know what the midpoint scene is going to be, so let's just get started. So I've been making really good progress here. I have gotten to the very end almost. I'm about to finish here with the finale. However, I'm having trouble making the finale come together. I don't really know what I want to happen 100%. So I was finally able to work through the climax of the story. It was a little thorny and difficult to work out, but I figured out something cool for this climax. And now I finished the plotting for Sashim's story as well. And now, as I did last time, I want to go through and do a little bit of naming so that when I'm doing future phases of the outlining process or trying to actually write the story, I can use real names instead of random long names. So I finished with naming all of the characters for Sashim. We have filters as well. So I made it so that each of the characters, they have a filter for the characters that are present in their actual arc. And it also says where each of the people is from. So I can just easily go to a person, see what characters are present in their story and find the person I need. So at this point, I have three character arcs worked out with some backstory scenes included for Naj. Let's be real. I had my doubts about outlining this in three and a half days, and I'd be lying if I said it didn't get a little stressful at times. But through pushing past my doubts, I was able to finish the outline and even name all of the characters. And now, I'm ready for the next step in my Camp NaNoWriMo prep. And that is an experiment I've been excited to try for more than four months.